this video tutorial, we're going to be learning about view and view components. You're probably asking yourself, what is a component? Why would I use a component? What's the big deal? What's so special about components? In today's video, we're going to try and answer some of those questions. Hopefully, by the end of the video, you can appreciate components as much as I do. If you've been around development for a while, you've probably heard phrases like dry, don't repeat yourself, or kiss keep it stupid simple. Using components accomplishes both of these programming principles and we're about to explore that now. So let's get started. So I'm sure you've run into a situation before where you've maybe had a list of information, each item had a title, maybe a little description, and a link. And then you need to replicate that an unknown amount of times, maybe you know how many times, but you want each and every one to look consistent. You want the title up top in bold, you want a little description, not in bold, and maybe a link that's clickable. A good example of that would probably be google.com. If we go to Google, and we'll just go to google.com, and I'll just search cats. So as we scroll down, each one of these, if you could envision an invisible box, this is a component right here that each one has a link, a title, a description, and then this component has music by, distributed by, this next one has a link, a title, a description, again link, title, description, link, title, description. Each one of these is a component with its own logic. So they have a template that says put the link up top, then put the title, then put the description. Let's see if we can mimic this logic using view components. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. To get started, I'm going to create a new view application. So I'm going to bring up Terminal. Now, if you haven't watched my other videos, I go through how to install the view CLI and view dev tools. We're going to be using both of those in this tutorial. I've already installed them, so I'm ready to go. I'll put a link up top so you can find them if you haven't done this yet. But I can just type view create and whatever I want to call my new view application. I'm just going to call it blog and we'll say enter. For this tutorial we're going to use view 2. View 3 is out right now but it literally just came out last week so I'm going to roll with view 2 for right now and maybe in the future we'll do a couple videos using some of the new features in view 3. All right, we should be good to go. I'm going to CD into blog and it says npm run serve. And we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to copy this. I can minimize this. All right, so we just ran the view CLI and it's created a view template for us in our terminal and it's serving it up on localhost 8080. So this is just the default right out of the box. We haven't changed anything yet. So I want to slide this over to the side and we're going to check out the source code that makes this up. File open and we called it blog. Let's open that. So let me close these out real quick and we're just going to kind of step through. So we have our root directories blog, we have our node modules which we don't have to touch, we have our public which contains a favicon.ico which is just the icon, we have index.html and then if we jump down here to our src we see assets, components, app.view and main.js. If we look inside of assets we have an image which is presumably the yep, that's just this picture right here. So that's that. We have components, which has hello world, and then we app.view and main.js. So let's, the root of our, our project, our application is going to start at main.js. So we're importing view, we're importing app.view, which is this file right here, and then we're creating a new view instance. So in this view instance, we're saying take app, which is this, this file, 
and mount it on the ID of app. Now where's the ID of app? Where does that exist? If we go back up here to our public and then index.html, we can see we have div ID app. So we're telling it to mount app.view right here. So all of the changes inside of app.view should show up on our index page inside of this div tag. All right, so let's close this index.html. We shouldn't have to change anything there. We're going to close public and let's jump down here into our app.view file. So in here we have our template, we have our script, and then we have our style. We're going to look right here inside of our template. Now this is app.view and inside of this template we have an image which is the logo and then we have this hello world msg welcome to your view.js app. Now hello world is actually a component. If we look at our script tag we're saying import hello world from components hello world and then we're telling app.view that this component exists. So we're saying components and we're passing in hello world. Sometimes you get in these big projects and maybe these components are in subfolders, maybe it's components slash list slash hello world. So you might have two hello world. So one of the cool things you can do with components is you can actually rename them. Um, we'll just call this one, I don't know, donkey. Donker, okay. So Donker, so we just renamed the hello world component to Donker only in this app.view file. So if I save this, I'm actually gonna break, and we can say I broke it over here. But if I just copy this and paste this up here, this hello world has been named Donker. And we can see that it works. One of the other cool things that view does, I think it's a recommendation in the, um, in the docs, but when you include your components here, you can see it has hello uppercase world. Up here when you're when you're including your component inside of your template, they actually can use kebab case, which is hello dash world. You can see it auto populate there for me. And I'll go ahead and save that. And I didn't break anything over here. So you have a couple options. You can import it and then use kebab case. You can import it you can import it and use the default name, or you can import it and give it a different name. So let's go ahead and dive into the Hello World component. So here we are. We can see we have this H1 with this MSG. We have some P tags. We can see these P tags match up with the for guide and recipes. Um, it looks like all this pretty much makes up the bottom half, but you don't, what you don't see is this text right here. You only see it in app.view, and we're going to dive into that and why that is. So view has what's called props or properties, and a component can have props and properties. If we look at our hello world file, we are defining props right here, and props is an object, and we're saying that this component can receive a property of MSG and we're anticipating that property to be a string. So when we call this component in our app.view file, we're passing a property of MSG equals welcome to your view.js app. So we're actually creating the component and passing it some data right here. So back on the hello world, so we're passing it the property of MSG, and then we can see it being used up here, but let's take a little dive into what these curly braces are, what that means. If I open up view.js and I go to learn, guide, template syntax, and interpolations, and we look at text, the most basic form of data binding is text interpolation using mustache syntax. So they're referring to these curly braces, these double curly braces, as mustache syntax. The mustache tag will be replaced with the value of the MSG property on the corresponding data object. So it's going to replace the value that we passed in. MSG, we're passing it this value to here. 
and then it's going to replace this MSG with the value that we received. So let's go ahead and test out that theory. I should be able to come over here. If this is the value we're passing in, I should be able to change that value and it should show up. So let's go hello world. And that's exactly what it did. It changed that value. So we can see how the app.view imports the hello world component, uses it right here, and then passes it the property of MSG. And then that property is defined down here and then used in the mustache tags right here in our H1. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all this because we don't really need it. And I just wanted to try out a couple things. I'm going to go ahead and save this. All right, so we got rid of all that. And let's go ahead back here to our app. And one of the cool things about components is they're reusable. So I should be able to use this a couple times. So we can say hello world, hello scriptster, hello everyone, and then hello all. And there we go. We've literally created one, two, three, four components. We've passed it some data and it shows up over here in our application. Now earlier we were talking about lists and how a component can have multiple properties. So let's go back over here to our hello world. And right now we're only passing a property of MSG, but I think we talked about a title and possibly a link. So we've just told this component that it has it can receive additional properties and those properties are title and link but we haven't used them up here so if I save this nothing changes let's go ahead and we'll add some p tags and we'll do another p tag and in here we'll say let's put the msg here And we'll put the title up here. And then we'll put the link right here. So I'll save it again. It doesn't change at all because we haven't actually passed it any information. So let's go ahead and we know we have title. And this title can be cats. Go ahead and save. And it didn't refresh by itself. So we gave the first one a title of cats. And let's go down and let's just copy this. We'll paste it a couple times. We'll say this one's the title of big cats. Oh, bigger, bigger cats. And we'll say biggest cats, if I can spell today. So there we go. We were able to pass a title and a message and let's pass it a link too. So we'll go link and just like you suspected, uh, www.cats.com. We'll copy that and we can paste it right here. And we'll just change the links just so we know that we're passing different data to each one. And biggest cats. And there we go. Now, the cool thing about a component is if this was regular HTML and we decided, you know what, let's put the URL first, kind of like Google had it. So the URL goes first and then the title and then the description or the message. You would have to go through and edit each and every single one of these. But since we're using a component, it's just a template. So I can go ahead and copy this, paste it right here, and there we go. I'm all done. It was that easy. So this is just a real quick basic overview of view and components and a little bit about how components work. We're going to dive in deeper in the next video. Go ahead and play with this. Maybe switch some of these around. Maybe create a new prop and pass in some additional information. Maybe go ahead and mess with the styling a little bit down here and see if you can create a, a template for your list of cats. Um, We'll, like I said, we'll dive in deeper in the next video, but I just wanted to give you a real quick, basic overview, and we're going to grow on this a lot. And there was one last thing I said I was going to do, and that was the dev tools, the view dev tools. So I'm going to use option command I to bring up the Chrome developer tools. 
and you'll see we have this view tab. We have our root, we have our app, and then we have our four components. And we can click on these components individually and see what our props are. One of the cool things you can do with settings, if you come over here, you can actually make the props editable. So I'm going to turn that on real quick just to show you. And we can jump back over here. We'll do our first component. I'm going to double click it and we'll just say this link is www.scriptster.com. And you can change it right there in real time. So that's all I'm going to dive into the dev tools for right now. I just wanted to give you a quick example. Go ahead, play around with it, and I'll see you in the next video.